All right, welcome back. So that last, last section, if that was a little heady for you, that's okay. We went pretty deep in there. That's mainly a reference section so that if you run into problems in the future, you can come back here and look at how we manage things or send me a message and I will continue to update that section. Um, the last uh, part of this data section, just before we actually launch and get into Mapbox itself, even though we've been you know, touching it a little bit, um, is Mapbox Classic. And Mapbox Classic is an old tool. It's been discontinued for at least two years now since Mapbox Studio has really become the, the norm for Mapbox. But this was a desktop ap application that Mapbox used to have out, and uh, it allows you to create maps from your desktop and do styling in a different way uh, using something called Cardo CSS. And uh, what we're going to look at is where you can still find it because it still has some handy features in it or some things that you may be interested in using, such as uh, printing maps. It allows you to export maps at very high, um, very high levels, which is really cool. Um, and also allows this kind of CSS styling you see in this picture that I've put here. You don't really get um, inside Mapbox Studio because they built an interface to manage it all for you. Um, now, pretty much everything you can do, maybe even the printing maps, probably just about all of it, can also be done in Mapbox Studio, but I still think there's a couple things that are a little easier to manage, such as these little specific styling, or that it's it's just a tool you might want to have sometimes. Um, I've had it happen with Mapbox where uh, when I ask to do something very complex uh, in terms of something very specific around a zoom level or a particular type of data uh, display, they may recommend me to use Studio Classic uh, just to see if I can do it in that tool. So it is very outdated, but it's it's nice. It's nice, and it still works. I'm sure one of these days it's going to break completely, but it uses something called Cardo CSS, which if you're used to CSS, and you should be, um, is just like it. Uh, it's less click and point like Mapbox Studio. It's hard to find the download link. They've removed the page completely. I, th I think it's <laughs> you kind of have to get around it. They, they don't want people downloading it, I think, in general. Maybe they have the link somewhere, but they might keep it private. It's falling behind more and more. It, it doesn't run that great, so it leaves a port open on your computer all the time. It's a little painful. Um, but it can help with really large data sets that you're having trouble uploading. It can help you export things um, when you're having trouble making something the right size for, for Mapbox. And like I said, it's uh, printing maps. So let's go up there and try to find it. So I had it installed on my computer, but I wanted to go find it so I could show you guys how to install it. And it is definitely a little tricky. So n now if I search Mapbox, um, Mapbox Studio Classic. We go, we have this page here, um, and they define it. They, they have another screenshot there. If we click on the link, it just, if you saw that, the link just busted us right back to Mapbox Studio. And there is no reference to Classic on this page. They just completely redirected it, and like it doesn't exist anymore. So maybe I can try to find that specific page of Mapbox Studio Classic. Let's see if we can find that. It looks like it was saved in 2016 here. Let's, um, all right, so here we go into the old page. And I'll probably have the download link in there. And if that's all just a little too annoying, there is a GitHub page and you can install it from Node. So just look up Mapbox Studio Classic and do a little searching. Um, you'll find it and you'll manage to get it installed. Okay, so we're just going to run Mapbox Studio right from where it was installed. Just so we open it up, we're just going to do a little bit in here. And we will hop in. You will have to connect your Mapbox account um, through logging in, and that's just fine. Authorize it to use the app. And then you can just create a style, and I've created one here um, with just some basic stuff. So you can just go to New Style, and there'll just be some information here. Um, and why don't we just try styling this a little. So for instance, the land here is white. Why don't we try making it black? And I think we have to save this. So I'll just save it as test in my downloads folder here. It's all a little bit messy, but that's OK. All right, now you can see it's all changed to black. So just like that, I've updated it. And I can probably change it here, save it again. There we go. So you can make a lot of easy changes in here through something like CSS. 
let's look a little bit more at what's actually going on in here before I'm not going to go into depth since this is an old tool but I just want to briefly go over it you can see here when we click on layers that this style consists of many different layers all of these layers are later going to be available are available here for styling individually so you see country label here has a zoom information and so on a certain zoom the text size will change as you can imagine as we zoom out and in we want that to be different size and eventually we want Austria that word probably to just go away completely yes there it disappeared so from a certain zoom it doesn't exist at all and then it starts to exist and it changes font size and you can also change this based on these properties so you could say um, for instance, a country label is not such a good example for this, but for um, a road, you could say, oh, if it's a class, it's a motorway versus a street versus a path versus a minor rail, you can style those all differently um, so that you end up having a map that styles its railways and its highways differently than small side streets, even though they're all classified as roads. So this is where it's really... Um, you're going to be doing this in Mapbox Studio in, the, in our next sections uh, without seeing all this so directly um, or being able to do it with a CSS interface. So you can see here it's all fairly clear. See, you can see there's types of, uh, in this case, places, and they each get styled a little differently, and we get our output map. Now we can also work with uploading our own stuff here. You can see I've up actually uploaded one, but I'm going to move it, I'm going to add a new source. So I'm going to create a custom vector tile here with the, my bathymetry files. So I click a new source and it's just a big blank thing. So I have to add a layer. And there's a shape file. It could take a KML, a GeoJSON, all these different types. So this is the most versatile in terms of uploading all different types of files. So I'm going to browse. I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to find that eerie folder that I unzipped before. Find the shape file select it. So as long as all the files are in the folder you're going to get that vector source out of there. So here it is, nice little vector source. So now I can just call it Eerie and I'm going to say done. So now I have it locally, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to save it, I've already saved one, I'm just going to resave it as that. Oh, so I'm going to save it as Eerie. And there we go. Now it's saved locally. I could um, I, I don't know if Mapbox actually allows you to upload them anymore. Looks like they still might. So you can upload directly from here. Or you can create a style from it, which is what we're going to just do for the sake of development. So using the source locally, you can see here is that same thing. And there is no background map. So that's one of the slightly more unfortunate things about Mapbox Classic. It's a little harder to layer everything together. You should upload in order to do that. But um, just to show you a bit more, why don't we save this? Um, we'll save it as test. I'm just saving it wherever, just for the sake of this. And we'll change the line width here. So you can see it just got thicker. Let's change it to half. Looks nice too. We can change the color of it. Let's make that a little brighter. So we could do all these different types of things for the sake of styling and the sake of moving things around. Now if I wanted to print this, that's another nice thing you can do with Mapbox Studio Classic. There's this nice little export image going on right here. And you can specifically tell the number of inches that you want on the side or the pixel size. And you can give it specific bounds. So specific area of the map. You can even draw it, make it appear right there and tell it exactly what export you want to do. So that's great if you're a map maker. You can very specifically do this, make it the right size, give it the right resolution, even a very high 600 PPI resolution, PNG or JPEG, and ultimately just hit the download, and there you go. So this is a really fantastic thing to have, um, just in case you need this for some kind of project you're doing. So aside from that, I just wanted to go very quickly into this. There's a lot more depth in this tool, but it's not really worth going into because we're going to hit most of that inside Mapbox Studio. Um, but keep this in mind if you ever do need to deal with some files you're having a hard time, or you just need to show off a little styling uh, or print a map. So we'll see you in the next section.